Hey, Tesla, take notes on this one, ready? I think this is the craziest source of just wizardry I've seen in a car in a while. Just, I could push this button all day because I just don't understand how it can do this. Foggy, totally open. And if you want neither, just close it up. All right, what is up everybody? I'm here with the Toyota Venza. Um, you've already saw how cool the moonroof is on this thing, but I've just spent the last week with this vehicle putting almost four or 500 miles on this thing just to learn everything about it and let you guys know what I think about it. So we're gonna dive in. Let's start with the outside though. The styling is very sleek. It is from video, I just need to make this clear. It looks a lot bigger on camera. And sure, it's fine, but I keep comparing it to the Tesla Model Y uh, because yes, it's technically an SUV. Is it huge? No, it's not gonna be a great big family vehicle. I'd think of it more as like if you're cross shopping a car in a smaller SUV, this is what you want because it, you just get so much more functionality than a car, but when you're driving and you're in, in the cockpit, if you will, really get the feeling of a car with the functionality of an SUV. And there is room, you could totally like fit the kids in here, put stuff in the trunk, but you're not gonna fit like, you know, a ton of stuff. So of course we have the blue badging indicating that this is a hybrid, uh, part of Toyota's electric line. And that's why it's on this channel here. We cover electric vehicles, we cover hybrid vehicles and everything in between. A lot of electric truck content if you're a regular viewer of the channel. So if any of that sounds interesting, we are going to keep these videos coming. And man, this thing did not disappoint as an electric vehicle. It gets 39 miles per gallon. Let's actually take a look at my trip. I'll load it up for a trip up north. Now you got the buttons here but you also have, check this out, ready? I can get down with that. A quick check in here, I gotta show this off. I just did probably about, um, probably about 90 miles. This is since I started driving. Uh, but I did a, I held the okay to reset. So that re resets this total bar here. Uh, the top one is from when you turn the vehicle on. So that's when I stopped to get gas about halfway through. So we look at this number right here. I don't know if maybe the whole trip was just downhill or something, but even in sport mode with EV on, I got just shy of 50 miles per gallon. I mean, uh, come on, right? Now I will check back in after driving the other way because you know that's the only way to truly know what it'll be. So I'm not gonna reset this trip and we are going to see what I'm at, but holy heck, if this is really getting around 50 miles per gallon, um, not even on eco mode, that's pretty cool. I feel, I feel a little silly right now. I totally forgot I was driving a hybrid for just like this long and I just turned the power on and off like four times like why is it not starting and it's like duh because the engine doesn't turn on at low speed so when i turn it on it beeps but then i'm like i don't hear anything Man, for a guy who runs an ev youtube channel that's pretty embarrassing all right all right all right, all right guys we made it back and we are at 39 it almost went down 10 miles per gallon so it really just was probably the elevation difference um but hey i'll take 39 uh, miles per gallon all day long i think that's that's pretty good it's not as great as what we were almost at <laughs> 48 but hey uh 39 will do so as you see when i did a, t a mile per gallon test here on my way there i got almost 50 mile per gallon then of course it did average out on my way home but it totally lived up to that average uh, projected epa standard of 39 miles per gallon so if you are looking for something to save some costs let me tell you 
you're gonna <laughs> this does a good job at saving gas mileage i'm thinking of my jeep over here where i'm getting easily 13 miles per gallon so this does uh a, just a little bit better than that you know i actually did a car test review earlier let's take a look at what happened during that okay so the first thing that i've got to do is make sure that this can accommodate my family so what i like to do is I have a pretty generic uh, car seat right here just to give you a feel about basically any car seats you have and if it'll fit in your car if you're looking at something like this Venza here. So uh, let's go ahead and put it in and I'll kind of really looking for two things here. One, how easy is it to go in? Are the hooks really accessible? Does it clip right in? And then two, does it leave room for the passenger seat? Because that's an a issue I've had in a lot of vehicles. So if, if it provides enough room so that the passenger your seat doesn't have to be all the way up and that it goes in pretty easy then you know it's got my seal of approval so let's check it out so good news on the install here the clip is totally visible being right there uh, this is important especially on a, a nicer trimmed vehicle because uh, when it's buried sometimes these hooks especially if you don't have a nicer car seat like this one is uh, a, not the nicest car seat uh, these clips can dig in and hurt the leather seats, but when it's really accessible like this, you watch that, so easy to clip on. Overall, car seat went in super easy. Now it's time to see just how much room the passenger is going to actually have. So I'm definitely going to be an example of a bigger passenger here. Uh, just under six foot and around 250 pounds. So as you can see right here, this angled design of the uh, headrest actually uh, coincidentally worked really well with the car seat I have and allowed me to go back an extra three or four inches whereas if that would have been a flat taper then we really would have uh, probably <laughs> probably would have been really tight on room so good thinking from the seat design and yeah all said and done I think it passes the test as you can see Compared to my driver position, it's basically about the same. So you're really not losing anything adding, even if you went with two car seats here, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so speaking of room, let's take a look at the trunk here. Now, what you're gonna hear me say a lot in this video is comparisons to, well, I used to have a Tesla Model Y. And considering the size and the fact that this is also electrified and kind of in the same pricing range as a Tesla Model Y, I'm probably going to be comparing it a lot. It's a really, like I said, just really close in size, really close in everything. That being said, let's look at the storage to see how it compares. So much like my Model Y, you lose a little trunk space by having this angled trunk. Uh, therefore, you can't have boxes here because then they stick out and it hits. So you lose a little space that I would have loved to have, especially in this, but it's not the end of the world. And you d have a decent amount of trunk space back here. This is not going to be the vehicle that you get for like family road trips. This is a great, I'd say second car. So you don't want this. I mean, if you have a small family, just one kid, you could probably make it work the same way I made a Tesla work for a year. So you can definitely squeeze it if you're considering it, but all said and done, if you've got more than one kid, I gotta point you into something bigger. But the storage doesn't end here. Let's take a look inside. There's actually a compartment down here I wanna show you. So I know what you're saying, Larry, well, there's a tire in there. How am I supposed to fit anything? I gotta say though, even with the tire, it goes really deep in here. Let me grab something so you can see what I mean. All right, I was able to find a shoe box. I know random, but it just happened to be accessible in the garage, but I think it still gets the example across that you can see uh, the depth a little bit there and how it still has plenty of room to close. You could fit a lot of stuff, especially if you're willing, uh, and I don't recommend it, but if you're willing to travel without your spare tire, you've got a ton of room. So not bad for storage. All right, now that we took a look at the uh, car seat and the trunk space, I kind of want to share a little trip I took with you guys. So I took this on a nice road trip just to get every nook and cranny felt out of this thing. Uh, so let's take a look at what happened. I figured the best way to kick things off is to do a bit of a road trip, get the feel for everything. So when I give my report at the end, you guys have an idea of 
you know, the goods, the bads, and everything in between. Mostly using cruise control so far and the uh, auto follow and those features. And honestly, it basically feels like it drives itself. It's pretty good. Uh, the only issues with like the auto lane centering that I've seen, and it's barely an issue at all. It's like often when you're exiting or, or where the lanes merge from someone joining on the exits, it'll sometimes confuse if you're in this road or if you should be in the road to exit the lane to exit so uh you have to just grab the steering wheel and you're fine but it'll start to maybe turn you over there once or twice but you know I've, that's happened in uh hyundai's before i've driven and other these modern uh lane centering semi autonomous driving systems they're not perfect yet but they're good i like them any other auto driving system you've used, it's it's just on par with all of them. You know, nothing uh, mind blowing, but at the same time, you know, far from bad. Like I think um, it's a great commuter. It's great for if you don't have young kids and you uh, aren't going on a ton of family trips. Man, is it perfect? Because then, it, like, if you're between this and like a, a, a actual like car and not a, like in your considering a car versus a midsize SUV, and this is something you're considering, just do it. You're gonna love the extra space, and it feels luxurious and very similar too. Well, just you know, I feel like I'm in like a bigger nicer car all right so now we are in the inside of the toyota venza as you can see just absolutely luxurious uh the materials used in this vehicle um i've heard other reviewers uh, refer to it as lexus-esque and i would not disagree everything is sleek i would say stylish and functional you know this infotainment system i'll, I'll give you a tour in a little bit here but it's just, you know, actually I will say there was a bit of a learning curve just because I'm not totally used to the Toyota setup, but once I figured it out, man, it's it's a breeze. So let's take a look at all of that stuff. Before we get in the cockpit, just take a look at how great this looks. We have this brown and gray kind of contrasting with each other, really popping, giving you like a, a cool aesthetic. It's far from just a normal singular color or normal blacks, what you see, blacks and grays. It gives you something really unique and contrasted with this kind of plasticky, but like wood look, it looks awesome together. I, I mean, it's really the styling and design of the interior of this vehicle really did a great job. Now this is probably a good time to quickly mention we are looking at the limited trim and this is the highest spec version of the Toyota uh, Venza that you can get. And being the highest uh, spec trim, it does come in around $44,000. So starting with this center console, we have these conveniently placed both heated and ventilated seats, which the ventilated seats in the summer, I never want to go back. Are you kidding me? It feels delightful. Uh, moving right along, we have our column shift, or not a column shifter, we are just a regular shifter. And that leads us right into kind of the only thing I don't absolutely love about this setup. This is kind of, your phone charger is here. So for example, let me put my phone on the charger. It's a little awkward to kind of squeeze it in there because you have your ignition here. These buttons really aren't in the way, but with the column, you get what I'm saying? It's just, if I, I'm being really picky, but I just feel like these buttons could be here and then you could have this whole, and the button maybe here too, and then you'd have all this storage area instead of trying to squeeze your phone there. Although it does keep it out of the way, so you're not tempted to be on your phone while driving, which is a great thing. So let's move right along. The layout of these buttons are absolutely fantastic. It makes your life so easier to, while you're driving to quickly select things. Now, uh, just because we're talking a couple pet peeves, I've been a fingerprint king on this thing. I don't know if it's showing up on camera as much as it, uh, you can kind of see. But I just know over time, this is just after a week, mind you, you can see me touching the air and stuff. I mean, I'm being very picky again, but 
it's definitely something to think about, especially because if they were buttons, I would have no complaints because it's so easy to change everything. It's really laid out nicely. The volume, I also wish might have been a knob would be nice, but you can long press and hold that and it'll go up and down. So it's totally fine. But again, I'm just, I'm just trying to show all the ins and outs of this thing. So moving right along, look at this giant, gorgeous screen that we have in here. And again, fully touch screen, really intuitive. quick too you got everything you need now here you could get lost in and that's why i said there's a bit of a learning curve to the tech in here but you don't need to use all that and if you're just using the main things these buttons right here are fantastic so we have our home button which brings us back to the setup that you can design here i was kind of tinkering around with it which is why it has all these contacts and then we have our just menu view and this is a side view of either you could either see the controls in your car uh, you could see the seats you could see what's playing on the audio you could see i kept this up being kind of a, a, a an electric channel i loved seeing what was going on with the battery so i kept this up but you can move this to either side or be your full screen so if I go back, oh, sorry, wrong button, there we go. It can appear on either side if you want this closer. But then again, you have these quick buttons here that take you right to what's playing, or your navigation, which was fantastic. I used it a lot, actually. <clears throat> And of course you have your Apple CarPlay and everything. It is not wireless, uh, or if it is, I could not get it to work. However, it, it, when it went plugged in, it worked totally fine. And I guess if I'm being a, another little tiny pet peeve, if we look back here, uh, and you see here, these are the older USB style, not USB C's. Uh, which, you know, again, is everyone probably has these still laying around the house. I had to go dig in, but I found some. And then you are able to use your Apple CarPlay. But I will say the infotainment for me all week was good enough to not actually want to use Apple CarPlay, which is amazing. <laughs> I think that actually says a lot. Now, while on my road trip, I talked about this rear view mirror, uh, which is fully digital. That is the actual mirror. Hey, look at that goon holding the camera. Get that guy out of here. All right, there we go. And this thing is awesome, especially because I, I like to mention how much I loved in like Hyundai vehicles and Kias and Genesis, how they all do the blind spot camera when you switch lanes. Having this up while you are on the expressway actually kind of functions like that for me because it is such a wide angle. Not only that, there's a menu in here which really blew my mind. You're adjusting a menu on your rear view mirror. If that isn't the feature, I don't know what is. But watch as I can, oops, let me get back to that. I can shift the angle of the camera so you can really fine tune this to really whatever you want. So this will change the tilt of it even, and then you can fine tune exactly where you want the placement, which is pretty awesome. It is not touch screen. Not that you need it, but just in case you were wondering. <laughs> And then brightness. I did have to turn the brightness down because when you're driving, you have a heads up display. You have a dash right here, or screen, a screen on your dash. You have this giant infotainment and then you have your rear view mirror as a screen. You got four screens while you're driving. That's about overkill if you ask me, I don't know. But again, far from complaining. I, I love all the technology in it. Steering wheel controls. It's very easy to use. Pretty standard stuff on that. And then down here is where we keep some other convenient buttons. I'll try to show these off. So that just about does it with my time with the Toyota Venza. They're coming first thing tomorrow to take it away from me. And I do wanna just do some final thoughts here of what I think. So um, I was trying to sum up who the perfect person for this vehicle might be. If you have any interest in electrification, uh, but you're nervous, this is a great first step because you get to, to, to kind of see how the battery regenerates, you get to play with EV mode, um, which uh, you know only worked at pretty low speeds, but it saved a ton on gas. 
and it did just an awesome job being that first kind of step into an electric vehicle. It is just a standard hybrid, not a plug-in hybrid. Maybe it would be cool to get a plug-in version of this down the road. I could really see it competing with something like a Model Y, which I know I wouldn't shut up about in this video, but again, space-wise, I couldn't compare it more because it's the like exact same size that my Model Y was. Maybe even a tiny bit smaller, but that's just because it has to house an igni uh, uh, engine where the Model Y had a little more room. But other than that, this thing is pretty cool. You know who really loved it is my mom and everyone her age. It was turning heads for that, uh, you know, 50 year old, mid 50 range love this vehicle and I do too living with it for a week it was so hard to find things that I don't like about it <laughs> I mean if I had to really critique it maybe I'd choose a different exterior co color this is titanium glow uh, which is totally fine especially if you want to it's a little under the radar maybe I want something a little brighter maybe but again that's all of the personal preference and has nothing to do with the actual vehicle so I really do think that it is a smart decision the moonroof i can't get over that thing is the coolest ever i guess if it could open it would be just that much better but i love the whole frost and defrost i hope this vehicle helped and if you have any questions at all please leave them in the comments i will happily answer them and a huge thank you to toyota for giving me some time with this vehicle i, I really appreciate that and i hope that i get to bring you guys a ton more uh, hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and electric reviews on this channel. So thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing. You're the best. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see ya. Bye.